Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having and me. And thank you for doing another uh, talk show after you already did a talk show this morning. Oh, I appreciate sure. you doing uh, double oh, duty. Oh, no problem. I feel like a cool kid anytime I get to do anything that's after 12 in the afternoon. Yeah, so. well, that's, uh, well <laughs> thank, thank you. you for cool kidding with us. And you were, uh, you were also a cool kid in that you were an intern at SNL. Yes. Uh, when you were, what, like, 19 years old? 19, 20. Okay, yeah, and I was there. I was in the cast then. Uh, do you have any uh, memories of me? And I'm, yes. I'm hoping. I do. Okay. Yeah, you were a total gentleman. Oh, and good, very good. Very respectful of interns. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. And, 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 uh, I remember one time I had to like clean up a table, and there were like magazines all over it, and they like made me organize it, and you helped me. So there you go. There you go. Yeah, That's I, incredibly. Yeah. I mean, nice uh, guy, son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's such a weird time in my life, and it's such a it's a thing that people always ask about. People yeah. always want to know what the experience was like, and I, you know, even coming in this building, it's it's just very nostalgic because there's a page letting me in, and yeah, you know. no, and it's a lot has stayed very much the same, not just the physical space, but there are things like the page uh, outfit. I don't think has changed in uh, 50 years. They wear the same jacket. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always happy because it's such a stressful place that when I meet people who used to be interns, I'm just so afraid that they well, somebody came up and gave me a piece of bad news, and I like took I like just I looked at them and was like, what? So I'm very happy that I was helped with magazine assortments Everyone instead. Everyone was wonderful. Good. I mean, I don't know if I just, like, I also, like, you know, have worked at a lot of other places that, like, crazy things happen and nothing ever happens to me. And I always wonder if, like, people were so scared of my dad or I just yeah. come off like a tough chick. I don't know. But yeah, yeah. I had a wonderful internship. So. <laughs> That's right. I probably took it out on one of the interns that wasn't John McCain's dad. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Or David McCain's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of problems Either way. growing up. So uh, I want to ask, uh, you also had something... Uh, uh, both uh, your parents have been impersonated on SNL, and then it happened for you. Uh, Aidy Bryant uh, did you. Yeah. And what was it like? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing maybe you weren't watching live. When did you hear that Aidy had done you on the show? I was on vacation with my husband, and I woke up in the morning, and I had a ton of... It was like... Ding, 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 when I turned on my phone. And it was like, you were on SNL, you're on SNL. And I was like, and then I brought it up on the computer. And 80 and I went to high school together at Xavier crazy. College Preparatory in Phoenix. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So it's weird to be like, have this girl I went to high school with impersonate me, which is amazing. And she's so talented and incredible. And I watched it and I thought it was hilarious. And my husband thought it was hilarious, except. They paint me out to be an anti-vaxxer, uh -huh. and he thought that was the most offensive part. Gotcha. He was like, you're not an anti-vaxxer. So let's so. use this time right now to just say to everyone that Megan and I agree and vaccinate your kids. Vaccinate yeah. your children. Okay, Thank you. There we go. Yeah. Common ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, guys. <laughs> You, uh, uh, you've obviously uh, been very open and vocal about the fact that uh, it is distressing to you, the fact that not only did uh, Donald Trump attack your father uh, in life, he is continuing to attack him after he passed away. Uh, are you... What do you think, if your dad was still around, like, do you think he would be delighted by the fact that Donald Trump cannot shake him from his psyche? I mean, when he was alive, he was always like... I mean, this is a late-night show, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I don't give a... Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, so, you know, he just doesn't care about right. people attacking him. He had been through so much. It was very hard to rattle him in any way. And it's just strange that the sort of feud didn't end when he passed. Yeah, historically um, it tends to. It yeah. should. Yeah. <laughs> But it, I think it says so much about where the president's head's at. And the last time he had attacked my father publicly on Twitter, it was the weekend. And I just remember when, you know, my life, when I spend my weekends, it was with my family in Arizona, hiking and cooking and camping. And he, I wish he would do that with his family on the weekends instead of obsessing over my family. Yeah. And it's very strange. Yeah. So. I think. Uh... But it makes me, like, sad for them. Sure. That you're not, like. Life is really short, and yeah. I feel it a lot right now. And I think it's because my father died a little over eight months ago. And I just feel every moment. And I think you, you, and this is a message to everybody, not just the president, but like spend the time off you have with those you love because you don't know if you're going to get a phone call saying the person you love the most in the world has glioblastoma and has a year to live. Mm -hmm. And I know what that looks like. And I just wish the president and his family would like really live in the moment and you're president and I'm sure there's a lot of interesting things to do in the White House and yeah. spend time with your family. I will say if the other alternative is camping, I think he's still going to tweet about your dad. <laughs> I don't see him. God, I don't know. Um, I, you know, obviously, uh, they had a history where uh, the president uh, was very open about how he felt about your father. Your father, in turn, was very open with how he felt about the president. They were not fans of each other. Uh, I imagine it must be harder for your family with someone like Senator Lindsey Graham, who is your uh, father's uh, incredibly close friend, and now has sort of uh, tied his uh, fortunes to the president. Is that a harder thing uh, for your family to, to watch happen? 
Well, first, I think that everyone in the Trump years sort of has to reconcile with their conscience and how what role they played in it on all sides, because I think that he evokes the worst in all of us. That's my just take on who he is as president. I think he has wrestled up a lot of negative things in a lot of ways on both sides. I think with, um, you know, Lindsey, I grew up with Lindsey Graham. I can call him Lindsey. And he, I considered him my father's best friend and uncle for a really long time. And, you know, he, it's hard for me. And it, it disappoints me. But I also understand politics. And I will always love him and respect him. But politically, I don't understand it. Because I think the idea probably is that, Politically, you sort of have to, you know, make make amends with Trump in one way or another to be politically relevant and to gain re-election. But my father was his biggest enemy, uh, or I guess one of his political largest enemies, and he won his re-election handily in Arizona. And Arizona, up until that point, was a red state. Now it's switched to purple. But um, it is possible. I just think it. You have to work harder. Yeah. So, and I don't know if politicians want to do that, but I'm I'm always going to love Lindsay. I'm always going to have a special place in my heart. But um, you know, it, of course, it disappoints me. Yeah. I mean, I think I would be inhuman yeah. if it didn't. If you said, that's really cool, you be you. Um. <laughs> well, I, it's just, it's strange, too, because people know the relationship. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, I think probably most of people here know that, and people ask me a lot. Yeah. Well, like, I, I, you know, I don't think uh, uh, Senator Graham made any secret of it, and I think that's why he has to answer these questions now, is, you know, when you have a friendship and you talk a lot about how much somebody means to you, uh, it's very strange for people to watch you sort of reverse course on that. Um, I want to ask... Uh, uh, about Ilhan Omar, Congresswoman from sure. uh, uh, Minnesota. You know, she uh, was in a situation, you were uh, very vocal about some of her tweets. Uh, people were upset, thought it was uh, anti-Semitic language. She has since uh, unequivocally apologized for them. And then after that, uh, there was this tragic synagogue shooting in California. And you once again sort of, on a Sunday show, a uh, Sunday news show, uh, brought up her tweets again in the context of that shooting. Um, on George Stephanopoulos. On George Stephanopoulos, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I just wonder, because I do think it's, it's fairly dangerous, and, and you brought it up after Congresswoman uh, 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 Omar had also had some death threats against her. Do you think, you know, she's obviously uh, now stated she needs to be more careful with her language. Don't you think other people who talk about her need to be a little bit more thoughtful as well? Or do you stand by those comments of tying her to this, her rhetoric to the synagogue shooting? I don't think I tied her to it in particular. I think that... I'm calling out what I see as anti-Semitic language, and when you're talking about but even um, after hypnotic... you called out after she apologized for it, I do want to establish um, the timeline. I, I don't. I think that Democrats are are hedging on this, and I think it's very dangerous. And I think Chuck Schumer and I are in alignment about Israel's stance in in geopolitical politics. I think it's of the utmost importance, and I think she is bringing her party to the extreme extremism on this. And I think we have to look to Europe and what's happening over there and that they're, you know, in, in the British politics, anti-Semitism is very common. And I see it happening over there and I worry about it happening over here. I stand by every single thing I've said. And if that makes me unpopular in this room or in front of you, so be it. Um, well, I don't. See, that's a weird thing that you would take the position of trying to be unpopular. Here I am trying to, you know, find the common ground on this because I do think one of the, I think we could both Were agree. Were you bothered by her language about 9-11? Um, I thought it was taken out of context, and I think if you watch that whole Would you speech, give President Trump the same, same leverage uh, if he had said the same thing? Uh, well, I would say that Donald Trump is certainly in no position to criticize her language on 9-11 based on the things that he said about 9-11, right? But would you give... I just think you have to give people the same credence, and I think... Well, I would, let me make the, the clarification between Donald Trump and, and Ilhan Omar is one of them has apologized and said they're going to try to do better, and they're going to be educated by people who know about this, that's what she said. And I think she, you know, it's an interesting thing when we have two Muslim women for the first time, they do have a different perspective on things. And I think when we talk about the idea of like, let's all try to meet in the middle on things, we have to listen to other people's perspective. And Oh, I agree, I work on The View with Joy yeah, Behar yeah, every yeah. day. I listen to other perspectives on Is there month. a way for people to talk about uh, differences in Israeli policy without getting framed as anti-Semitic language? Yeah, I just think you can't talk about uh, Jews hypnotizing the world, talking about all about the you Benjamins. You keep bringing up the two tweets that she's apologized for, and I think that's a little unfair to her, especially because we've <laughs> Are established... Are you a publicist? What? Are you her press person? No, I'm just someone who, who cares about the fact that there's someone out there who is uh, in a minority, who has had death threats against her, and I think that we should all use the same language that you're asking her to be careful about her language, and I, I would ask everybody else to be careful about theirs. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm not sure what, what would you, what would, 
What would make you happy coming out of my mouth right now? I'm genuinely curious. I'm not. I'm perfectly happy with everything that's coming okay. out of my mouth, and I like that we spent this time together. Okay, you yeah. seem a little. I mean, I think um, you know my opinions are very strong, and I think sometimes because that I'm is coming on, across. I do want you to know that. But well, I'm on a I'm on a network show. Yeah. I'm on ABC, and I think sometimes when you're a hardcore conservative woman like I am, mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's jaunting. I'm not on Fox News anymore. I'm on ABC. And I think sometimes my beliefs, even though I do believe I represent the vast majority of people in red states, or at least some, a lot of women in the middle of the country who are pro-life, pro-NRA, you know, but, you know, strong foreign policy hawks, people who believe in limited and small government. I think that Sometimes it's, it's, it tends to be jarring for people to see someone like me in mainstream news and not on Fox. But I think it's good that you are in mainstream news. You do have a platform. I mean, I think there's this idea that maybe you're saying unpopular things, but certainly ABC thinks it's worth hearing. So, you know, you have a platform, I have a platform. I think we're very lucky, and I think we have oh, to... Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, like, so lucky. Yeah. Well, uh, we're in agreement on that as well. Vaccinate your kids. <laughs> Megan McCain, everybody. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I really appreciate it.